Well, you're most welcome to this talk. Now, it looks like there's going to be a lot of data being released early next year in the United States, and this is going to have huge implications for healthcare and many other topics in the United States. But as well as that, the information that is gained from the freer use of information in the United States is going to have huge implications for the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, all around the world. And I think it has to be said, uh, could have a significant impact on certain international organisations. Now, I'm just going to give one example in this video, the one of autism spectrum disorder, because the amount of autism in the United States has been increasing dramatically since the year 2000, indicating that this is some product of lifestyle factors in the 21st century. Let's have a brief look at the data and then we'll have a look at what's likely going to be happening. So autism spectrum disorder. Now the Autism and Development Disabilities Monitoring Network in the United States. A little more detail on that later. But here we have data from 2000 through to uh, 2020 from 11 sites in the United States or different states in eight year olds. And here we see the year. So in the year 2000, one in 50. Year 2002, one in 50 eight year olds had autism spectrum disorder. But by 2004, that had gone up to one in 25. Then one in 110 then one in 88. By 2010, it was up to one in 68. Slight reduction in 2012. But then, sadly, tragically back on track in 2014, one in 59, one in 54, 2018, one in 44, 2020, the last year for which there was full data, one in 36. So we see it's increased from one in 50. And this was higher than previous decades, but this is when there's been good data available from this uh, network. So one in 50 in the year uh, 2000 to one in 36 in the year 2020, a massively increasing trend, an upward trend that's been going on for decades and definitively since 2020. Now, we need to find out the cause of this because there must be causes related to changes in lifestyle. I think it's got to be lifestyle because genetics doesn't change that quickly. Now, Mr. Trump was asked a question a couple of days ago. Let's just look at that question now and think about what his response could mean. Do you believe there's a connection between vaccines and autism? Do you uh, believe there's a link? Well, I don't look at that. Right now, you have some very brilliant people looking at it. I had dinner the other night with the head of Pfizer, the head of Eli Lilly, and uh, RFK, as you know, and Oz. And we had, uh, and other people within the administration that are involved in the medical. And uh, we're looking to find a, you know, if you look at autism, so 30 years ago, we had, I've heard numbers of like one in 200,000, one in 100,000. And now I'm hearing numbers of one in 100. So something's wrong. There's something wrong. And we're going to find out about it. What about the president? What about the president? Can I get you? Can I follow up on um, Robert Kennedy? He's on the Hill today. He's meeting with senators. What do you say to people who are worried that his views on vaccines will translate into policies that will make their kids less safe? No, I think he's going to be much less radical than you would think. I think he's got a very open mind, or I wouldn't have put him there. He's going to be very much less radical. But there are problems. I mean, we don't do as well as a lot of other nations, and those nations use nothing. And uh, we're going to find out what those problems are. And, and another thing that came up, the dinner was fascinating, because I had Bobby and I had, again, the head of Pfizer. You know who that is. He's a uh, highly respected man who has run an incredible company, likewise with Lilly, the top two people. And uh, we had the head of the industry also. So all companies mm -hmm. were represented. And I said, let's have it out now a little bit. And you know what came out of that meeting is that we're paying far too much because we're paying much more than other countries. And we have laws that make it impossible to reduce. And we have a thing called the middleman. You know the middleman, right? 
the horrible middleman that makes more money, frankly, than the drug companies, and they don't do anything except they're a middleman. We're going to knock out the middleman. I'm going to be very unpopular after that Mr. statement. President. Okay, Mr. President. I don't know who these I don't know who these middlemen are, but they are rich as hell. And, and we're going to knock out the middlemen. We're going to get drug costs down at levels that nobody has ever seen before. And that really, I tell you, we spent more time talking about that with Bobby and with the executives and Oz, all of them. We spent more time talking about that than anything else. Well, I think you'll agree, certain amount of excitement there amongst the uh, amongst the journalists. So I can't really imagine uh, the barrister Sir Keir Starmer doing that for an hour and talking spontaneously and taking all questions. Anyway, getting back to the point, it's not about what Mr. Trump believes. He's going to look for evidence. Now, he's having some interesting talks. It sounds like he's got industry leaders and RFK and everyone around his dinner table. Boy, would I like to have been sitting under the table during that conversation. And I'm assuming they wouldn't invite me for dinner. But uh, pity that. Pity we don't have a recording of that. But, but there you go. That would be very interesting. Autism rates up dramatically. So he was talking there from something like one in 100,000 up to one in, one in 36. It's a massive increase in autism. Now, um, Bobby Kennedy, it's not his views. He's got an open mind and he's going to open the data, commission the research and get hard answers to these questions. That's what I believe is going to happen. An open mind looking at the data, interrogating the data, liberating the data, getting people to analyse the data. Because as Mr. Trump says there, there are problems, very real problems. He wants to find out what they are. And then also one of my hobby horses, people in the United States and indeed this country are paying way too much for drugs. It, it, I find it incredible how inefficient the health service is at buying drugs very often and what we pay for simple drugs is really quite incredible. Why no one gets a handle on this? I don't know. So it sounds like Mr. Trump's going to get a handle on that. He's been talking to the, to the bosses of industry, going to cut out these middlemen, whoever they are, these profiteers, and get the cost of drugs down. You know, I get heartbreaking emails from the United States, people asking me how they can survive for a particular condition on uh, lower amounts of drugs simply because they can't afford it. Anyway, let's stick with the, um, let's stick with the uh, uh, autism spectrum disorder for the time being. So uh, this data was collected from uh, 11 sites in the United States. Uh, and here we see the sites there that shows this dramatic increase of eight-year-olds with autism spectrum disorder to one in 36 in the year 2020. So approximately a third of children with autism spectrum disorder also had intellectual disability. Now, if there's something interfering with the uh, intellectual disability or the intellectual development of children, that is just a massive, uh, a massive risk. So if the children with... Um, Autism, about two thirds did not have intellectual disability, but about a third did. Not good at all. Now, if this is caused by an external factor, it means there's an external factor here which has caused lifelong uh, intellectual disability. And I think the IQ here was below uh, 70. So basically, these are people who couldn't work effectively uh, in, in the majority of jobs. If there's something causing that, this is just an absolute disaster, a travesty and an outrage. And people are, it looks like Bobby Kennedy and Mr. Trump are going to try and get to the bottom of this. So autism spectrum disorder in eight year olds, um, prevalence per thousand was uh, 27.6. That's one in 36. Maryland, much lower than California. And in fact, on the CDC site, very high in California. And on the CDC site, they give the different states here, which is useful because this is going to be very important for epidemiological data. We can compare and contrast different states and look at what the differences are, if I get the right um, click. There we go. So um, a percentage of eight-year-olds identify with ASD by this network. And here we have, so th th this, th this is the overall incidence, 2.8%. Incredible, incredibly high, 2.8% of eight-year-olds. But we see here Maryland relatively low, but California 
much higher. So what's happening in California that's not happening in Maryland? Or what protective factor is happening in Maryland that's not being implemented in California? Interesting questions. Male to female prevalence 3.8, so 43 per thousand amongst boys and 11.4 amongst girls. So uh, for every girl identified with the ASD, boys were nearly four times more likely to be identified. But for the first time in 2020, the prevalence in girls reached over 1%. And it's also reported in all ethnic groups. Um, Now, more to say about that in a minute, but Mr. Trump was actually asked about uh, this again later on in the interview. So let's just uh, play that clip now as well. First, on vaccines, do you want RFK Jr. to revoke any vaccines? No, I want him to come back with a report as to what he thinks. We're going to find out a lot. We're doing two things. We're going to have tremendous cost savings will come out of this. That's a minimum. And we're also going to have, and I think, very serious discussions about certain things, whether it's pesticides. On You know, Europe doesn't use pesticides, and yet they have a better mortality rate than we do. They don't use pesticides. In fact, they use it as an excuse not to take our farm product. We spend billions and billions of dollars on pesticides. And something bad's happening. Again, you take a look at autism today versus 20, 25 years ago. It's like not even believable. So we're going to have reports. No, nothing's going to happen very quickly. I think you're going to find that Bobby is much is a very rational guy. I found him to be very rational. No, nothing. You're not going to lose the, the polio vaccine. That's not going to happen. Uh, I saw what happened with the polio. I, I have friends that were very much affected by that. I have friends from many years ago, and they have obviously they they're still in not such good shape because of it. No, that was and many people died. And the moment they took that vaccine, it ended. Dr. Jonas Salk did a great job. So I don't anticipate that at all. But we're going to look into finding why is the autism rate so much higher than it was 20, 25, 30 years ago. I mean, it's like it's a hundred times higher. There's something wrong, and we're going to try finding that. We're also going to find out why are we paying more than other countries. And we were in the process of doing that through transparency and other things. We were doing a good job in that first term. Well, so interesting, isn't it? Bobby Kennedy being in charge of health is not going to go in revoking things. He's going to collect data. He's going to report to the president, and it's going to be done rationally. Lots of talk there about cost savings as well, which is absolutely brilliant. Maybe more on that in a future video. Pesticides as a risk, billions of dollars being spent on pesticides. We need to get back to um, more um, natural agricultural techniques and we need to get rid of a lot of the appalling factory farming. It's bad enough in my country, but it's even worse in the United States. The animal husbandry, animal welfare has got to be prioritised as well, I believe. But certainly there's something in the environment, whether it's pesticides, whether it's iatrogenic interventions that's causing this autism. The president says, or President Trump-elect says, something bad is happening. Now, I think what he's referring to there is he's got contemporaries who had polio. Now, uh, in 1955, a lot of children got polio. I remember when I was a, a child, some of the bigger kids, they were all older than me, but they had calipers on and they had all sorts of problems because of polio in 19. 19- 55. So very important that we don't get a resurgence in polio. And um, and RFK is intelligent enough to realise that what one particular intervention might have as a side effect, another intervention will not have as a side effect. We're not talking in generalities here. So specific data, I be, believe, will be collected with specific answers. And uh, I believe that the answers to this will come that the answers here can be found once we have transparency of data. And I believe we will get answers soon that can transform health quickly. Now, much more we could say about that, but we'll leave it for now. Let's just close with uh, Mr. Trump talking about the drones that we talked about recently and the lack of government transparency. Uh, Mr. Trump is saying the government knows what the drones are. The President Biden knows but won't say. Uh, The military knows, apparently. Um, what these drones are. So um, people are really quite worried about this now. If you watch some of the videos, it is concerning. Uh, 
And as I said uh, in the live uh, talk uh, yesterday, was it, or the day before, the government needs to explain what's happening to trusted people because the government say there's no risk. And these, these trusted people need to say, look, I know what's going on. I can't tell you because I've agreed with the government not to let you know, but it is safe. You can trust the government. We need to have these trusted intermediates and get rid of the, the uh, anxiety that, that is so widespread about these at the moment. So the government knows. We don't know what it is, but the government does know and the military knows. So uh, there we go. That's what we know from Mr. Trump. Uh, interesting. Uh, we'll just let him say that and then we'll finish. But for now, thank you for watching. Can you comment on the drones that are flying around yeah. New Jersey <laughs> ports? It seems like the American people have a big disconnect. The, gover the government knows what is happening. Um, look, our military knows where they took off from. If it's a garage, they can go right into that garage. They know where it came from and where it went. And for some reason, they don't want to comment. And I think they'd be better off saying what it is. Our military knows and our, our president knows. And for some reason, they want to keep people in suspense. I can't imagine it's the enemy, because if it was the enemy, they'd blast it out. Even if they were late, they'd blast it. Uh, something strange is going on. For some reason, they don't want to tell the people. And they should, because the people are really, I mean, they happen to be over Bedminster. <laughs> We want to know the they're, they're, very, they're, very, they're very close to Bedminster. I think maybe I won't spend the weekend in Bedminster. <laughs> I've, I've decided to cancel have my you trip. Received, have you received an intelligence briefing on the drones? Uh, I don't want to comment on that. Have you been do you have any, do you have any reason to think they're a threat? Uh, two, two, yeah. two quick questions.